Hello and welcome to the NBA Outlet presented by OTGBasketball.com. I'm your host, Nick Fay. With me as always, Corey Waldron. What's up, Corey? No, I'm uh, Nick. Chilling. Beautiful Saturday. Feeling jacked up. Let me get it. Yes, Corey, we're jacked up today, bringing on special guest Moody, a.k.a. Big Shot Moot, Mitchell Franklin. Talk about the 2K League, looking like he's going to be one of the top five draft prospects in that upcoming NBA 2K League draft. On OTG, we're looking to kind of expand our esports coverage, so don't be surprised if you see some more 2K stuff from us. And as always, you can listen to the outlet on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, OTGBasketball.com, Google Play, and now airing on Dash Radio. Without further ado, we'll bring on our guest today. Moody, a.k.a. Big Shot Moot, a.k.a. Mitchell Franklin, one of the top NBA 2K draft prospects. Looks like probably a top five pick in the upcoming draft. How are we doing, Moody? Doing well, guys. Um, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm fired up. We got a big shot up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on. Obviously, OTG, we're trying to pick up our 2K coverage. And we're starting off with one of the best 2K players in the world. Obviously, you have the experience. You've already hit big shots. But I know that people want to know what it's like as a 2K pro. So, how much time do you put in on a daily basis, you know, when you're in the grind playing 2K? Um, I would say back before becoming a pro, it, I would at least put in eight hours. Like, my sleep schedule is still messed up from it. I start around, like, after dinner time, say we all get on around 8 o'clock, 8, 9 o'clock, sometimes 9.30, and play until about 4 a.m. And then if we stop before that, um, like, my team Throwdown and I, uh, we, we've become kind of a family of brothers. We would stay up beyond our games, our league games and stuff, to like 5, 6, sometimes 7 in the morning, just like chatting about 2K, watching film, uh, just having casual conversations. So. so it's definitely, it's like a full-time job pretty much, you know, eight hours a day, and you're staying up and working with your team too. It's about the chemistry on the, uh, I would say, on the screen. So how did, how's that? You know, how important is that chemistry as a 2K pro with the other players? Uh, easily. I mean, I see it as a full-time job pretty much, especially now, but before then, because I'm a full-time college, uh, college student, um, I'm still actually enrolled at the university. So I took this, my family and I decided it was best to take this semester off because of how much a commitment it is and with the combine coming up and everything. Uh, but about the chemistry thing, I think it's huge. I try to always preach to people, um, let it be well known. I would take a teammate in the league that's going to be a great teammate, has great personality and the skill of someone there over some egotistical, uh, highly skilled guy. Because chemistry is what really, like, chemistry and communication is what really messes the elite team to set them apart from the field. So I, I really try to preach and get it well known that chemistry is arguably the biggest uh, factor uh, when becoming a top team. Yeah, same thing in the NBA. You know, most of these good teams have been together for a while. Same thing in 2K. Now, do you have any game day rituals? You know, do you have to wear any certain watch, eat a certain snack, drink a certain beverage when you play? <laughs> not really. Um, I, I do do rituals like that, but I try not to think about it because I've played in so many, like, big games. i played in one of the biggest on stage. So I don't, I don't really get nervous anymore um, for games. But before that, I would I try to do some rituals. I try to wear, like, championship socks like <laughs> there you socks that, that they bring me luck I so I still sometimes wear them honestly just because they're comfortable and like if we have a big game but um as I previously mentioned we're not allowed to play in any type of money game now so we there's no real big tournaments or seasons or anything so if I get on and play I'm gonna have to play park or walk on so it kind of takes the fun out of it but I mean I have two wristbands on both side of my monitor and I kind of like touch them for good luck every time the one on the left says fueled by doubt and then the one on the right says i can do all things so i've always kind of had that there uh just as a friendly reminder i like that do you have a special controller you got to use every time or you just do whatever they throw at you um no i mean i've never had the luxury of having money or being wealthy so i've been grinding it out with the same controller i've always used uh the one that came with the ps4 there we and go it, it's brought <laughs> me luck i mean it's the one that uh got me with the big shot and has me hitting other clutch uh, shots and being in the moment. So I'm just kind of riding it out with Old Faithful here. Man, it's lucky. Like, I've smashed about five controllers over my lifetime <laughs> playing video games. So restraint to not smash a controller. I'm like, I'm impressed. Uh, dude, I've been there uh, back in the old days, um, back when I was, like, in middle school and stuff. And I was playing, like, trying to play competitively. I was actually sponsored in Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2, not by anything uh, fancy, but I had a sponsorship. 
And so I played it competitively was a huge tryhard. And I would just rage back when I was immature. I would throw controllers <laughs> in my wall, like snap my headsets. I mean, I'm looking right now, I can see a couple like little baby holes behind my uh, my TV, not my monitor, where I just raged and just frisbee tossed it into a wall. Call of Duty breaking controllers and putting holes in walls since 2007. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. How much would you say 2K's impacted your life? You know, from you could be positive or negative in this answer. I mean, it's huge. It's definitely been arguably the biggest impact in my life, uh, other than my family and friends. It it just has taken me so many places and given me so many opportunities. I, if you would have told me 10 years ago this would be happening, I would tell you guys you're crazy uh, over what a video game could be doing. It, because, I mean, I played sports all my life, was a big soccer player, was going to go to college and play, and <laughs> I I really – like nothing compares to what this video game having control in my hand the experiences the friendships the families uh i've met i've um i've became a part of and just the experiences honestly just taking me i, I never really traveled when i was younger had the luxury of it and just as many places in different states um 2k this this video game has taken me it's unbelievable and it's honestly just getting started yeah, uh, it's it's been crazy. I mean, the hype's definitely been around the league. I know, obviously, you're on Twitter. You see all that hype. I, it's easy to say. How excited were you when they announced the NBA 2K League, when you heard this was going to be a thing? Obviously, esports have been really popping up, but to have it be associated with the NBA is a big deal. Well, I didn't think too much of it at first. Like, I was excited about it, but when they announced it, it was back when the uh, Road to the All-Star Tournament was happening, so I was kind of fully locked into that. And then it kind of hit me excuse me, it kind of hit me later after we had lost the game, like a couple of weeks after I was trying to be positive and I was like, man, this is something I'm definitely going to grind for. And it was just more motivation looking ahead. Like I knew I was meant for it. I was built for it. Um, so once it actually, the reality of it started sitting in, uh, setting in, you like seeing all the teams uh, announce the team brandings. That's when it really started to kind of becoming reality and, it was like, man, I can really make a career out of this. What do you think's the biggest difference? Obviously, you've been playing professionally for a while and making money winning tournaments. What do you think's the biggest difference right now from going from what you were doing in 2K to being in the actual NBA 2K League, having that platform? For me, um, not a lot of things change, honestly, as far as my mindset. I've always been locked in when it comes to big games, uh, when money's on the line, because <laughs> I need the money. Big so, shot move. Yeah, ex exactly. So... Um, when you hit the hit that shot in that type of moment uh, for the PS4 championship, where you're down 16, you know, thousands of people are watching you and stuff. Uh, it really builds you, your mental confidence. Um, it's really allowed me to be more mentally stable and locked in and not really feel the pressure of anything. Um, especially when you play on that stage. I try to preach to people, that stage is different, man. I'm telling you, you can try to prepare for it. You can try to think of it, like think about it. But once you get there, you're playing your first game. Like, a lot of these guys are going to be nervous. And I'm trying to help them out, but I don't want to help them out too much because with my teammates, I'm going to be that vocal leader or captain. So I'm going to be able to kind of comfort them through the entire process because it's, it's different. I mean, you think you're just going to get up there and play in stage. You got a little pressure in the crowd. But the anticipation starts building up. Your nerves start building up because you're just sitting in a backstage listening to someone like Hannibal Burris, a, a comedian – celebrity uh announcing doing pregame and then you got another 30 minutes you got to go backstage for introductions and stuff and while you're just sitting there looking at the crowd you got cameras on you that that makes you feel nervous as well like you, you honestly the build up and uh, anticipation uh waiting to get on stage like in your chair to play is longer than playing the physical game and then once you get into the game you get in your chair you see the crowd, you hear the announcers, you see you have three different spotlights, like personal spotlights on your face. So, so it kind of makes you sweat there. Then you have multiple cameras around you, um, like four to five. And you know they're, they're looking at you and, and you know like you're on, you're on camera. But you actually physically know when it's personally on you because I could be locked in, zoned in on my screen. Then you see this bright, like, look like laser red dot just turn on. You're like, man, that camera's on me, dude. Like, I can't, I can't not see it. Um, so it, it's just a lot of pressure, honestly. I feel like a lot of these guys uh, are definitely going to fold under the pressure. They're not ready for it. Um, just go into some of these um, 
events like the Mavs, GG event, the Magic event, the Pacers, uh, a couple of them had like 2v2 tournaments, and I saw guys getting nervous there, like sh- their hands shaking. Um, so if they're going to be getting nervous there, then I <laughs> – I feel bad to see what happens on that stage, to, to be completely honest. I know my team's going to be ready for it or at least somewhat set because I can give them that, I guess you could say, veteran leadership and experience and really kind of coach them through it and let them know what's going to happen like this and this, uh, just kind of well-prepared. So, Moody, when you see a guy, you say you saw somebody like with his hands shaking, like if you play against him, are you going to talk trash? Like you like pick apart your opponent like verbally when you're playing Absolutely. against them? Or- Zero questions. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the W. And, I mean, I'm one of the most friendly guys you can be. I can get along with any single individual, period, uh, have a good time. But when it comes to game time, I turn different. I'm a competitor. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to maliciously attack anyone or start cussing people out. But I'm going to get in your head because I'm not nervous. And I know you're nervous, and I have the experience. So when I see guys start getting trash talked to, um, they start to crumble. They definitely feel the pressure. They can act like it's like kind of UFC MMA when, when someone gets rocked with a hit and you see that other guy smiling at him and shaking his head like, nah, they didn't hurt. You felt that. Like, trust me, I do MMA. That, when you start doing that, those are the punches you feel. Like, you're in La La Land for a minute. So if I see someone that I think is not as good or is nervous, like, I, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to let them know. I'm going to be like, you're ner- I'm a, You're going to see me standing up. I'm going to be yelling across over the stage. I'm going to say, he's nervous. <laughs> like, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in their head. I'm telling you, bringing out your inner KG. How much <laughs> you got to? How much do you think? You know, you mentioned the experience hitting the big shots. You've already won some big time tournaments and championships. How much did that help you in the combine? And you know, getting ready for the draft and kind of showing off to these different teams. Oh, it's huge. I mean, the exp- I feel like experience kind of masters all um, in 2K along with chemistry. Like if you've been playing 2K for years and you've been consistently competing at the highest level you're not just going to lack skill because there's a difference between basketball IQ and NBA 2K IQ. So you either, you, you have the 2K IQ or you don't have it. Um, Just really going in the combine, it, it, I was not nervous one bit and I was able to kind of talk to my teammates and, and be a leader no matter the situation, because we all know the combine was, was definitely iffy, like the builds and archetypes and the way people were playing selfishly, trying to get the ball multiple people were just camping in the paint uh it was definitely a huge obstacle to play in but i feel like the, my experience um really helped me with my success my uh, huge success with my combine numbers and win percentage and just moving forward into the future what do you think was the biggest hurdle of the combine you mentioned it and there's been plenty of articles about some of the issues they've had what do you think was the biggest, you know, issue or, you know, difficulty to get over? Was it the people just kind of being ball hog and just worrying about themselves? I try not to think about it, um, what was happening. I mean, there was a lot of confusion. Like, I, for instance, I posted on Twitter. I had one guy that was legitimately – I had one of my losses. I had an 80% win percentage or a little over because I, I would – first and foremost, I'd always try to go for the win. Like, I've never been about personal stats or anything. Like, I know I'm skilled enough and smart enough. I'm going to get mine. So as long as we win, I'm, I'm cool. That's always how I've been a team player. Uh, like, for instance, one guy that was on my team, like, I hate, like, put blaming, uh, doing the blame game on individuals or anyone, but we legitimately lost because of this guy. He, he wouldn't go – he was completely AFK the entire game and wouldn't, like – he would just move his stick enough that he'd be in the game. I even posted a clip wow. on – I even posted a clip on Twitter. It's there. This guy the entire game has some chick over – <laughs> were, they were they were smoking weed the entire game, and he was the shooting guard. He had a pure sharp. He let his pure sharp go for like forty, and he started raging like he was legit having a full on conversation with this female chick there. And they were you could hear them. They were smoking weed. They were talking about the guy was talking about oh man you dropped my weed. Like, <laughs> the girl dropped his weed. I mean I mean they were talking about like having sex and stuff. And I mean bro like we got a game like like. It's serious it, stuff, yeah. Some, yeah, some of these guys, like, like we want to make a career out of it. And we, we don't want games like this to cost us and if it means one game or so stat-wise. So it was just kind of agitating. But now that I look back at it, it was funny. And it was kind of funny at the time, too. Like, I was like, man, this guy's a nut. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be Any, honest. Yeah, anybody who's played games know the mic can definitely be funny. But yeah. um, how impressed have you been with the 2K, you know, the NBA 2K teams? You know, you mentioned some of the events. Obviously, we've seen some of the pictures of the housing. How impressed have you been by the league in general and the organizations? 
uh, highly impressed. The the potential of this league is huge, especially because like you have the esports that are like immensely growing, like Dota, uh, League of Legends, Overwatch, and me personally, I know a lot of people feel the same way. I I try to watch some of them, like when they're happening. I don't have a clue what's going on. I'm gonna be completely honest. I have no idea what's going on. But with 2K, anyone and their mother has yeah, they've picked up a basketball before. They've watched basketball, so they can they can turn on Twitch, see a NBA 2K League game playing, and be interested because they actually understand it. So I feel like that's kind of where the huge potential is, and I think these teams and and owners and staff have been doing a great job i mean i've had inter- interviews all week i have them on next week and the ones that i've had this week uh a couple of them kind of blew me away with what to expect if i was drafted there like what they they have uh the living situation uh the mentality it, it kind of just it's it straight like like i said before this is a video game like who, who could have ever guessed over a video game like this um this huge opportunity and all these um, perks that I could be potentially having, especially it's, and it's, it's so surreal. It's the first year too. And obviously it's going to get bigger. I think the association with the NBA is so big in the sense that, you know, they're definitely going to push it at their games on their platforms. And I think it's going to bring more interest. And like you said, basketball fans are basketball fans. They might get into the 2k league before that they weren't before, because now it's associated with the NBA. And I'm really intrigued to see what they do with that combination. Oh, exactly. And what I try to also do, just touch on that a little bit with video games. So for someone that says, oh, like, how are you making money on a video game? It's a video game. Like, I don't understand. Uh, why why watch it? Why watch other people play when you can go play basketball or you can go do something, you can go do it yourself. And it's kind of the old saying, like, um, I can go outside and play basketball right now or anyone else, but you can still sit here and watch March Madness. Yeah, it's kind of that argument, and like you had these kids, so the popularity I feel like it's gonna continue to grow because you have kids. To be honest, to put in reality, they're not born athletically gifted. Um, like sports, athletics, they don't come natural to certain people or anything else. So what they can do is they find their place and they can kind of find a skill set to hone and, and show off in video games because there's so many opportunity in video games and you can legitimately be good at one if you if you practice. Whereas sports, like, you can be the most unathletic guy if you work your tail off. The, the reality is, you, like, you're not going to go professional. Yeah, everyone is not born LeBron James. You're not, you know, that, God exactly. get the talent. No, exactly. And we're video games. Anyone can play them. Yeah. So, Mo- Moody, with that being said, have you felt yourself become kind of like a role model to kids who maybe like do kids now, you feel like they're coming to you more and more as you've been growing in this community? I definitely want to have that like title as kind of a role model in that sense, kind of like be how Ninja is of the 2K League, because growing up, I didn't have much and um, I wasn't the most popular kid. I didn't really fit into a lot of friend groups, um, wasn't able to do much. So I found my niche in video games early life. That's kind of how they've caught on here. I've just consistently kind of been an avid video game player. And for the league's sake, uh, I'm, I, I want to be as positive as I can in growing the league and giving back and a mentor to – Anyone possible can be kids, adults, just someone that can see me as a positive influence because I'm given this this stage where I can make a difference now in the future. And I want to use this this stage to kind of be able to do as much as I can, kind of like how Ninja is doing with how he's blowing up on Twitch, but he's still um, pushing out like suicide awareness charities, all this stuff. Like It's crazy, like adopt a dog uh, or, or animal every month where he pays the animals vet bills completely so i kind of want to have that opportunity to be a leader or someone that can be looking looked up to like i know some of these guys um and i hate to to talk like this because i'm not going to be personal uh, towards anyone but a lot of these top guys they, they've developed egos and they won't follow many people you can't really reach out to them they won't respond or they'll just kind of ego you, you know? With me, I've been the same person since day one to kind of like, I haven't completely blown up yet, but I mean, I, I've been seeing some popularity, and I guess you could say quote-unquote clout. And I always tell people and always let them know, 
Um, I have my DMs open. I have on request, though, if I don't follow you, so I accept it. But I always take the time to reply to every single person, no matter how big, how little. You could have seven followers or 20,000 followers. If you reach out to me and are asking for advice or something, I'm always going to take the time to reply eventually. Yeah, I, honestly, that's great. Taking advantage of your platform and doing the right thing. And you mentioned it. We've seen it on your Twitter. You know, people reach out to you. You help them, give them advice, and I think that's great. But let's talk a little bit about your player profile in terms of your strengths playing on the screen. What are the strengths of your game? What do you do great out there? Uh, well, first and foremost, I feel like definitely my vocal leadership. I try to always be kind of that anchor on defense because the way our offense has always ran, I've never had the luxury of having an offense ran through me or being the primary secondary score when I'm very capable of doing so. I proved it in the combine and any other team I go play pickups and stuff on. So I kind of try to try to be that vocal leader when things are going bad. I always stay positive because being negative or reflecting on past plays is one of the worst things you could possibly do in a game. Um, I really try to be the hype man too. try to always lift everyone up. And I'd also say my versatility and experience. Uh, this entire year, I've made over 10 characters. I've had to delete some slots too. Uh, just trying to adapt to our team's needs, how the game's played. I've played everywhere from shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center on different builds, shooting build, inside build, uh, pure sharp, just constantly moving every single night, which in the past, I was kind of a little upset about that because all these other guys are getting like 93 overalls and above. Um, you can really just sit on a, on a position in archetype where me, I'm sitting here having to switch every single week, but now I'm very thankful of it because it's made my game so versatile where I'm comfortable playing anywhere except point guard, really, because I know I'm not a point guard. I'm a big. So I just feel like that, my versatility, uh, my professionalism, and my experience for sure. Uh, like we mentioned before previously when we were talking about playing on stage and stuff, I feel like I'm one of nine players in the 102 that can actually say they have that experience. And until you get that experience – you don't actually have it. Like, it's not something I, I mentioned you can prepare for. You have to actually live it and do it. And I think um, I'm very thankful for that despite losing. What would you say is probably the most underrated aspect of your game? Obviously, you just mentioned the experience, the versatility. And, you know, uh, actually playing all those different positions gives you a better perspective of the game, too, in terms of helping your teammates. But what would you say is an underrated factor? Something that maybe people just don't show enough love to your game? Uh, my scoring ability, for sure. My ability to be able to take over a game and have an offense ran through me. I'm one of the most hardworking guys you'll find, period, in the community, one of the most motivated. So if I'm assigned something or I'm told something to do, I can adapt immediately. I can adapt quickly, quicker than anyone else, in my opinion. Uh, so if you give me a situation, um, et cetera, I'm going to be able to, to take a couple days, work on it, um, find something unique about it to really hone, and then I can run with it. So I feel like my, my scoring abilities, my offensive abilities are kind of slept on, other than the shooting-wise, because in my opinion, I'm the best shooting big man in, in the world. So Ooh. that's not slept on. That's not slept on. But my offensive abilities were, as you can give the ball down to me in the post, and I can get a bucket for you, where a lot of these guys have had the luxury of having an offense ran through them, being on a pure athletic or whatever. I just have never really had the opportunity, which I'm not upset with my teammates about, I always try to do what was best, and we've seen much success. But, I mean, it would have been nice at one time to kind of have that opportunity to be the primary guy where I can get the ball. Because in the league, I feel like I'm going to have that role, and I'm, I'm going to excel at it. So, uh, you know, a lot of people say the point guard is the most important role on a 2K team. Do you agree with that, Moody, or do you think it's the big man position because there's so few of you guys? Or there's not, you know, the abundance of the point guards as there are in bigs? That's a great question. I've been asked that um, – recently almost every single interview podcast and I have a different look on it than everyone else right now and everyone I've told this to they, they've agreed to me and they're like wow I really never have thought about that you might be right so right now the point guard is obviously the most like, like sought skilled after. sought after I was trying to think of the the correct term uh, to put it um it's it's seen as the most valued position right now because you have the meta of five out of the game, iso ball. So you got like guys like Dimes, uh, Fab, Compete, Radiant, and you know, other guys that are on six ten pure playmakers like Hood that can get you a bucket and and you can see that are the most essential. So the bigs are kind of in the corners, 
But if we're referring to the league, which I feel is the combine was an indicator of what to expect archetype wise, build wise. Um, if not, I don't know why they do it. Then the bigs are definitely the most slept on position right now. If you compare the big numbers to the guard numbers, it, it's a huge difference. It's a massive gap. Point guards didn't put up that that many in, impressive numbers, where bigs are just putting up these obnoxious numbers. And I think that's a huge factor into the point guard being six foot three, being that small, and not being able to ankle break or really not have that wide broad of areas to excel at. So I feel like in the league, if you get a big who can kind of be that two way player, vocal leader can get you a bucket, a dominant big and maybe pair up two dominant bigs, then you can find a serviceable point, a serviceable point guard later on in the draft that if you have the right piece around him can do the job just as good as the top elite guys because the game just like the combine was big dominant i feel like they did that because the league doesn't want to see five out meta and guys just scoring 50 points on their own like they want to see more of a real basketball perspective and i mean i'm not mad at it being a big like i'm one of the most unbiased guys you'll meet too so just kind of touching on that i'm not just saying this because i'm a big by heart but that's just really how i view it i feel like a big is going to be much more valuable than a guard just strictly off how the combine play was how overpowered they were getting a bucket um moving on into the league yeah and you mentioned it before you know your basketball iq 2k iq and it seems like you have a good perspective on different positions where does that come from has that come from you playing basketball watching the nba just playing 2k or do you have a family or friend that really helped you learn the game at a high level I mean, I'm an avid sports fanatic, uh, definitely basketball. I'm a diehard Celtics fan. They're my favorite team, sport team, period. So I've always been a lover of watching the game. I'm also a big diehard Duke fan. Got the dub last night. Um, <laughs> so that made me happy. But, I'm, no, I'm always, I've always i followed sports my entire life, and I've, yeah, I've tried to play them. Uh, I played middle school basketball a, a little bit in high school, but I stopped to kind of pursue soccer because I, I realized I'm a lot better at soccer than basketball. But, I mean – it's, it's kind of that comparison of NBA IQ, like basketball IQ, which I feel like you need. Uh, it's not a necessity necessarily, but it's something I feel like that definitely brings your game to the higher level compared to everyone else. You have that, and then you have a 2K IQ, which is just its own, its own branding, its own name, because it separates itself from a basketball IQ. It just comes with experience, uh, learning the game, uh, watching film. Because there's certain things in 2K, as you guys know, animations that work and don't work, yep. uh, position, position-wise, position archetype-wise that work and work better than others and, and just are more effective. So you kind of just have to have that knack of 2K IQ on, on if you're going to get stripped right here, if you're going to be able to rotate and pinch and lose the ball and you won't get caught. Like just certain – it's the little things. You know, I could go on and on for it about it. I, I have a question about your, your architect move. Who did you did you build your power forward around an architect or did you base it on a player you watch? What what went into you building your guy? So I have multiple guys, but the guys I've been using um, primarily lately is my pure sharp. He's a small forward, six ten, and I built him just because I wanted to be the tallest, uh, kind of like stretch I could be. But being a small forward, six ten, compared to a power forward, six ten, I got deep range Hall of Fame dead eye. So that, that's a pretty big badge. And then my center build. I've been primarily using is a seven foot three, uh, two ninety four, uh, sharp rebounder, and I made that because throwdown, uh, my team, or I guess to say my past team now since I'm not able to play with them really, uh, they like going five out, so it 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 was essential for a big the center to be able to shoot. And I had rebounding primary stretch secondary because of my shooting abilities. I feel like I had a pure stretch with the luxury of being able to snag boards over everyone. So those are the, those are the builds I've kind of been rocking out with that I like the most. And they adapt my game because I'm a shooter by heart. Like I mentioned earlier, I feel like I'm the best shooting big uh, there is in the world. And I'm, that's not cockiness or anything. That's just pure confidence. Um, I've seen it all, experienced it all. So the ability to be able to just knock down shots and have that threat to, to space the floor where they're not going to leave me a double was really just the, the main factor. And going into the combine, I was going to be a center, but 
I played one game. I had like 20 and 13 or something like that. It was a decent game. It was my first game. But then I started receiving messages and stuff saying, bro, you got to go power four, rebound athletics OP. Uh, the power forward position was 6'11 compared to 7'1 center. So it wasn't a huge drop off. So I went to power forward um, on an inside build and just started dominating and kind of showed that my versatility in my game, I was like, if someone can do this, I can do this. And it was just kind of that, that was the influence of why I was on that build because of how OP it was finishing wise and then snagging boards. I wanted to be able to, to get stops and snag boards, get out in transition. So it sounds like you're willing to fill whatever role your team needs to win. And obviously shooting, like you said, being the best shooting big in the world, just like the NBA, shooting is a premium. It's something that you really need to win a championship. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's a key in the NBA 2K League as well. Is there anything you would like to say to any of the NBA 2K teams out there before we get you know, on to our next segment? Honestly, I would just say whatever team values me and believes in me the most, they're getting the biggest work workhorse of the draft. Um, I'm going to outwork every single player, period. I'm not going to let the nerves of the stage get to me. I'm not going to let the stardom, the money. I mean, I've, I've been telling people I'd, do, I'd play this for free if I could, honestly. It's just it's just my passion, my love. Um, they're going to get the most motivated player to win, and I'm just going to be a competitor, honestly. Um, I feel like even though I've been in some drafts, like going top five, top ten, I still feel like I'm the most slept-on player in the draft because I feel like I'm the I'm the most valued pick out there when it comes to the total package of skill, willing, willingness to win, uh, personality, marketability, professionalism. I feel like um, there's not a lot of player that can there's not a lot of players that can really have that kind of Swiss Army knife uh, arsenal. So just really any team that that believes in me going to take that chance. Uh, you're getting the diamond in the rough of the draft, despite of where I'm ranked at. So you're the full package on the screen, off the screen with your teammates. Chemistry, definitely an important thing in any type of sport. You know, we know we got some couple, couple random questions for you. We know that your favorite team is the Boston Celtics. Who's your favorite NBA player? Oh, that's an easy one, Jason Tatum. I'm a diehard Duke fan. I was a huge Tatum supporter when he was in college. It was it was so fun to watch him play. And I'm a unique guy. I like I like having favorites or doing things differently. Um, so I, I'm, I don't like following the, the trends or meta set. So, I mean, everyone probably thought my favorite player was Kyrie, but I like to be different. I mean, Kyrie's up there, but I like Tatum a lot. What about, uh, you mentioned to us a little bit off the po- uh, off the show. Do you play any other games? Do you play any other video games? Uh, I have been lately. Uh, before I, it was just strictly like 2K. I, w- I would be locked in, playing that, watching film, which I still try to, get in the film room, put in at least two hours a day on 2K any way I can. But it, it's it's kind of tough. The motivation is kind of lowered due to the fact we can't play for any money or any of these um, seasons or leagues that the top guys are playing in tournaments. So, I mean, lately to get my mind off things and everything, I've been kind of running with Fortnite. But like I previously mentioned, that game triggers the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> like how hard people try. And I'm not the best, honestly. I'm not going to lie to you. But other than that, I'm, I'm a big FIFA uh, fan. I actually just picked that up a couple of days ago, so I'm trying to get on the sticks and play that. And some of my boys that are part of the one out of two and kind of stopped playing 2K, I've been playing NHL with them. That game's fun. I'm not good at it at all. I'm not going to lie. So I play defense. I just use the biggest guy, the enforcer. I just rock. <laughs> I just hit stick people, and they get mad at me because I go for hit stick so often that I whiff, and, and then I let in a goal. But that, that's what that, that's fun to me, honestly. And then um, CFDs recently. That game's actually kind of fun. Uh, it's just hard to find people to play with with your friends constantly on. So those are some games that kind of kept me active. I always try to stay on the stick, stay warm. Um, but to mention, you asked me about my ritual earlier. I forgot. There's one thing I do. I just It's kind of muscle memory now that I, I failed to mention it. I always get on the sticks of UFC 3 and play a, a game against the computer on the hardest difficulty. Before any of my games, because I feel like playing that game, it kind of gets you warmed up and, and it kind of gives you an added stick skill. Um, a lot of it in, Exactly. It kind of gets me warmed up and stuff. And I, I like playing it when I have the time because it's fun. It's also good practice. I feel like it's definitely helped my game as, as weird as it sounds um, with just my reaction and, and having to throw so many combos, dodging, doing so many different things. I mean, I feel like that just kind of has raise my level on the sticks so i gotta know though do you win those matchups those warm-up games against the cpu on hard you win in those 
it, it, sometimes, I mean, I'm not going to lie, they, it, they're on roids. They're yeah, tough. that's they're, what I'm they're thinking. Tough. I win sometimes, but um, a lot of the times, actually, I try to take one of the worst guys in the weight class. I'm an avid UFC fan. I love UFC. I'm actually going to try to catch the fights tonight. So I try to take one of the worst guys and match up against the toughest guy in the division. So I'll be like... Roy Country Nelson or someone matched up against like Steve Miocic, and I'll just okay. be getting killed. And I try to, I try to like win them. You want the it's challenge? Fun to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Before we get out of here, uh, Moody, anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, just honestly, to the ones I have personally, um, continuing to grow, the, the support and love means the most. Honestly, I like the little things. Like I said, I, I came from really nothing, had to grind my way up, uh, the 2K world, uh, ladders so just seeing the overwhelming like support and love from random people across the world I, I wouldn't say random but people i don't know i mean it means the most it's awesome just continue to show me love i'll continue to reach out and, and show it back and don't feel don't feel shy to ever be in my dms tweet at me ask me for advice i'm not some hollywood egotistical guy that's not gonna respond to you or block you or etc i'm always gonna take the time to really give back as much as I can, give the best advice uh, regarding the situation, and, and really just be ready for the league, man. I'm coming. I'm going to be one of the best. I'm making the playoffs. Um, it doesn't matter who you give them on, on my team. I'm going to be working. So expect big things. Any goals for your first season? Anything that you want to get achieved? Get to the championship. I think for that's, sure. that's no a good doubt. goal. Yeah, I yep. feel like if there was any other answer, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> Get, get to the championship. I'm not going to say when. I'm not going to be cocky and say when. I just want to get there first, and we'll move on after that. Yeah, and they, that, three, that's a great goal. Three-pointer in the corner, maybe. Hey, hey, <laughs> never know. Bell, the bells are going to be ringing in every arena we're at. We're going to be sold out with bells. That's what I like to hear. As always, thank you, Moody, for taking the time to hop on here with us. We wish you the best of luck in the draft. Hopefully you go number one. And, Corey, thank you for hopping on, and thank everybody for listening. You can catch the NBA outlet on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, OTGBasketball.com, and now airing on Dash Radio. Thanks, guys. I mean, the pleasure is mine. Thanks again, Moody. It's been, been, been an honor to be with the big shot. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like everyone else, man.